Here's another Back to Basics video. This one's going to talk about Lissajou patterns. I've had several uh, of my YouTube viewers have asked me about Lissajou patterns. So there's a little Back to Basics video about that. Uh, normally when you're using an oscilloscope, the X position of the sweep okay, is controlled by your horizontal time base. Okay, That's just kind of moving the dot across the screen. The trigger is going to kick it off and it goes across the screen at the speed determined by your time base. Okay. And then the Y position, or the vertical position of the dot, is controlled by the voltage that appears at one of the channels, or both of the channels. Okay. Uh, Lissajou patterns are generated by using what's called the XY mode. XY mode is where you know, you, we still have the vertical position controlled by one of the input channels, but now the X position is also controlled by one of the input channels. The way to go into XY mode on most of the older analog scopes is usually by turning the uh, horizontal time base knob all the way down to this position where it says XY. Now, some other scopes will have a, a specific button on them, say XY mode. There's other, other, depending on the scope, there'll be a different means of doing it. The digital scopes will usually have a display mode where you can change that. Okay, But here on this analog scope, we would turn the, the horizontal uh, time base all the way down. Um, so in this case, what I've got, I've got a, a, an identical signal being applied to both of these inputs coming from a this little uh, function generator right here. Okay, so if I turn on channel two, okay, it's kind of tough to see that, but let's change the vertical position on one of them. So I can see I've got these two signals, they're identical, they're lined up in phase, okay, so now they're both uh, you know, kind of lined up in, on top of each other here. If I go to XY mode, what's going to happen, is, if you think about it, both the X position, okay, horizontally and the vertical position, the Y position, are going to be driven with the same voltage. So in a sense, if you picture the dot starting in the middle, uh, if, one, if the X input drives it to go in this direction, the Y input is driving it to go in that direction, we're going to create essentially a diagonal movement of that dot. So that since these two signals are in phase and at the same frequency, they're going to line up with a, a diagonal line. So we're going to rotate those all the way down. There I can go see that. In fact, if I momentarily take and change the frequency of these of these two signals, both down to something like one hertz. Okay, let's go to channel two, change its frequency here to uh, one hertz as well. Okay, and now if I take a look at the scope, you can actually see that happening. Okay, you can see the the dot is just being driven in this diagonal way, because if we look at this on the screen, you know what we're essentially getting is the X position being driven by this channel here back and forth this way the Y positions being driven up or down and they're at the same frequency so we can actually see them kind of just driving that to beam back and forth. Let's change these signals back up to about a kilohertz or so. Uh, so now I change one of them to a kilohertz so in this case I changed channel 1 which is going into here the X position is now a kilohertz okay so that's moving this beam back and forth a thousand times a second but the Y position is being driven by just that same one hertz signal, so that's why it's just going in that direction. If I change that that signal now also to one kilohertz, okay, and align the phase, now I'm back to where we started. Okay, so now if we take these signals and let's consider what happens if we adjust the phase between them. Okay, so if I do if I set the phase of this guy to say 180 degrees, 180 degrees out of phase is the inverse of the signal. So now I've got one signal that's going up and down like this, the other one is going down and up like that. So in a sense, if you think about the XY mode, all that's going to do is change the angle of that diagonal line, okay, going in the opposite direction because as the X is being driven in this direction, the Y is being driven down instead of up, okay. So now where things get interesting is we can actually use this to say, hey, I know these two signals are identical, but they're 180 degrees out of phase. When they were in phase, okay, if I dial a zero back in, it looks like that. So now what's halfway between those? That would be 90 degrees. So if we dial 90 degree phase shift in here, I get a circle. Okay, and again, if we knock the frequency down here uh, to something like one hertz again, let's go to channel one, and let's go to the frequency at channel two, and make that one hertz also. Okay, you can actually see, and let me align the phase of those, you can actually see we're just traversing around in a circle. Okay, so this is kind of a slow motion version of what we were looking at. If we go back to a kilohertz of that guy, and let's go back to one kilohertz of this guy as well. Okay, and align the phase again.
Okay, so now we're back to where we are. So actually we're just tracing around that circle really, really fast. Okay, and um, again, if we go and play with the phase of this, I'll move in 10 degree steps here. So that's a 90 degree phase shift. There's 80, okay, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, etc. down to zero degrees, and now we're lined back up again. We work our way back up through 90 degrees, okay. Keep going, we go to 180 degrees, there we are there. If I keep going, it draws a circle again and say, well, let's see, if I get up to 270 degrees, that looks just like my 90 degree picture, because it really is. They're still, the signals are still 90 degrees apart, but they're 90 degrees apart the other way, okay. In fact, the only way to really can tell the difference between whether we're 270 or 90 degrees is if we go back to the time domain and take a look at those signals, okay, and see which one is leading, which one is lagging. Okay, another way to do that and actually to see it visually is let's go back and change the frequency again back to one hertz. Okay, so if I change the frequency in this case of channel two to one hertz, let's change the uh, frequency of channel one back to one hertz and align the phase. Now I can actually see that the dot is being driven around counterclockwise. Okay, and so I've got a 270 degree phase shift. Okay. If I change that phase shift to 90 degrees, okay, now we see the circle going around in the other direction. But the problem is when you're operating at these larger or faster frequencies, you really can't see the dot, which direction it's going in. So there really isn't a good way uh, with a Lissajou pattern to make a distinction between a 90 degree phase shift and a 270 degree phase shift or a, a minus 90. Okay. But that's kind of what happens with phase with these Lissajou patterns. Let's drop that back down to zero degrees. And I'm going to change the frequency again of both of these signals. Uh, let's make them back up to a kilohertz again. Channel two, and let's make that one kilohertz. So now we're both about the same thing. Align the phase, we're back to where we started. So now what happens if the signals are different in frequency? Okay, I'm going to do this in such a way that they're going to be different in frequency but still locked together. Okay. So let's change this one here to say two kilohertz. So if I go to two kilohertz, so now I can see if I kind of separate these out, it might be easier to see. There's a uh, one signal here at our original one kilohertz frequency, and here's the other signal at two kilohertz. So it's moving twice as fast, and that's the X input. So what you might imagine is now the X position in X Y mode is going to be driven twice as fast as the Y position. Okay, so when we look at the the Lissajou pattern, okay, we kind of get this kind of figure eight pattern because this, this signal, the X position is being driven twice as fast than we are here, okay. And I've kind of got this stable because I've got, you know, kind of a locked phase condition here. If I go back and adjust the phase again here, I can actually rotate this, this kind of pattern around, okay. As I kind of rotate it around, you can almost visualize this pattern kind of rotating around, you know, in front of you here. So let's bring that back to zero degrees, okay kind of get the figure eight pattern again. Um, now, really when signals differ in frequency, um, you know, they're really different, differing in how many degrees per second they're moving, okay? Um, and we kind of see that here because we've got this fixed uh, frequency difference. But if I kind of unlock these things, and the way I can kind of do that is uh, just by changing this frequency so that it kind of rotates it around a little bit. Let's, uh, let's kind of move it like this here. So now you can actually see it rotating because what I did is I've got one kilohertz on one input here. The other one is 2.001 kilohertz. You can kind of see that. Uh, so there's a one kilohertz and 2.001 kilohertz. And now looking at that, it looks like this signal is rotating or this, this pattern is rotating. And it's doing that because I don't have a fixed frequency or a integer uh, frequency difference between the two. Okay, but again, we still kind of have the the two points versus one point of contact, you know, as we go we go through here. So you can kind of recognize some of these patterns saying, yeah, that's a two to one frequency difference. Okay, if I go up here and make it this a, let's, let's go back and make this a, uh, let's see, I'm gonna backspace through this. And uh, let's go over here and make this say three kilohertz. So now you can kind of see this guy is now at three kilohertz. Okay, this guy is still at one kilohertz. So now I kind of have the three points of contact for one for every one point of contact we have the other way. So you can kind of get that uh, that kind of rotating pattern. So you can actually make you know by by recognizing these kinds of patterns. There's four uh, four kilohertz and five kilohertz. You can kind of get an idea of what what, what our frequency difference is. Now in this case, I've got a 1.001 kilohertz frequency here. 
Okay, so I've got a one hertz difference between uh, the two signals. We look at them, you know, on the normal scope. We can kind of see this one, uh, one signal is walking past the other one, and about every second they line up again. Boom, boom, boom. Right. So if we go to the list view pattern, we can actually see that every second we're going to hit that same horizontal position. Bang, bang, bang. So you can get an idea of what's going on with these two signals by actually looking at them with listed view patterns. Of course, there's a lot of fun things you can do with listed view patterns too. You can uh, you know, take the output of your stereo or uh, your iPod and put it into channel one and channel two. And if you're listening to something that is monochromatic, that's not stereo, then both signals will be traversing the, you know, at the same time you get a horizontal line. But once you go into stereo, the left and right channels are seeing different signals. So you're going to see kind of that spread. You'll see how much of your signal is monochromatic okay, versus how much of it might be stereo. And uh, it's just kind of a fun thing to watch. But that's just your basics of what uh, listed view patterns are, how they're generated, what the scope is doing, and how you can kind of interpret a little bit about uh, what these patterns are telling you. So uh, anyway, well, it turned out, uh, started out to be a short video. It was uh, 11 minutes long here, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it and got a little something out of it. And uh, of course, Questions and uh, suggestions for future videos are always welcome. Thank you.